In this video, we'll look at how to calculate standard deviation for group data. So, given already in the table are some intervals, 37 to 46, 47 to 56, 57 to 66, and 67 to 76. And the frequencies of whatever this was, how many times each of these intervals came up in a survey. 19 times, 23 times, 27 times, 28 times. So the first thing we're going to do is calculate the midpoint. We can do that on our calculator just by going 37 plus 46 and dividing by 2. That gives us a midpoint of 41.5. And we'll do the same with the others, though we're going to notice a pattern pretty quick. 51.5. You can probably predict what the next one will be without doing much math just by adding 10. But we'll check just to be sure. 61.5. As long as your intervals are evenly spaced, the pattern should hold. Sure enough, I get 71.5. Okay, that's done. The next thing is to count up the cumulative frequency. We actually probably won't use it, but it's good to have some other applications can use the cumulative frequency. So up until this point, we've seen 19 things, and then to this point we've seen 19 plus, you can probably do that in your head without a calculator, we've seen 42 things. 42 plus 27 means we've seen 69 things. And now we've seen 69 things plus 28 gives 97. So we've seen 97 items so far. Okay, once we've got that column done we want to calculate the frequency times the midpoint. That'll give us this f times n. It's sort of like there are 19 in this category, this interval. We're going to count each of those 19 as 41.5. So we have 19 times 41.5. That's 788.5. Okay, next we've got 23. We'll count them all as 51.5s. That's 1,184.5. Next we've got, what's next? 2761.5s. And that gives us 1,660.5 total for that one. And then we have 2871.5s. That gives us exactly 2,002. Okay, well our goal is to calculate standard deviation. The first thing we'll do is get a list of all the deviations. That's just the midpoint minus the mean. One problem, we don't have the mean yet, so we're going to need that. Might as well calculate or show the mode just before, you don't need to, but just if you're asked for the mean, median, and mode and the standard deviation, how do you find the mode? It's whichever interval occurs the most. In this case it's 67 to 76, it occurs 28 the most times. So you could say the mode is 67 to 76, or your other choice would be, you could say 71.5, as in the midpoint. Either way, you can express the most common of the group data as an interval or as a midpoint. You have the same option with the median. The median is which interval occurs in the middle. Well, there's 97 total numbers. I know that because I did the cumulative frequency. So what's halfway to 97? Well, that would be if there were 98 things. We divide that by 2, we would have 49 things. So if there were, and there are, 97 things, then that would be, so the 48th thing is going to be right in the middle as we got 48 1 to 48 on one side oh no it's going to be 49 we got to round up the 49th thing so think about this we have 48 things on one side and 48 things on the other is the middle thing is 49 so the median is going to be the 49th item I, that's why the cumulative frequency actually did help us here we can see up to this point we only have 42 we're looking for the 49th thing so it's after this interval because up to here we only have 42 the 49th thing must occur in here, which is 57 
to 66. The median is in this interval, or you can say the median is that interval's midpoint, 61.5. Okay, we didn't need that, but we showed our work. And why not? But we gotta calculate the mean. The mean we're gonna calculate by taking the sum of all the f times m's over the sum of all the total frequencies. So when you're looking at that, you can calculate it here, or you can calculate it in the table. If you use the table, just be sure somewhere to say that you're doing the sums. We'll take the sum of the fm's here equals, and let's add them all up. 78.5 plus 1184.5 plus 1660.5 plus 2002, and we get 5,635.5. And let's calculate the sum of all the frequencies that we'll do over here. What are the sum of the frequencies? We already know it, because we've got it here. It's 97. So when we're doing the mean, the mean is just the sum of all the frequencies times m, or if it's more clear, the midpoint frequency times midpoint, so that sum was 5,635.5 divided by, oh, my pencil just broke. Let's keep going, hang in there. What's the sum of all the frequencies? 97. And so we get 5,635.5 divided by 97. And you get, let's say, 58 Let's round to one decimal. It's approximately 58.1. Put a rounding dot. Good. Got our mean. Our mean's necessary because that's what this x bar is. We're going to take the midpoint minus the mean. So this midpoint minus this mean. That's always the same mean. 41.5 minus 58.1. And we get negative 16.6. Got it. Next, 51.5 minus... 58.1 and you get negative 6.6. You might see a pattern here, but let's keep going. 61.5 as in these calculations might not be necessary if you can see the pattern. Last one, 71.5 minus 58.1 and you get 13.4. Those are the deviations or the midpoint minus the mean. Now we'll square them all. So negative 16.6 squared. Oh, need a brackets around there. Negative 16.6 squared. Because squaring a negative makes it positive. And knowing that, you can even leave out the negative. I'm going to do that on the next one. I know when I square, I'm going to get rid of the negative because negative times the negative is positive. So 6.6 .6 squared is 43.56. Next one, 3.4 squared, 11.56. And then 13.4 squared, 179.56. Okay, took my deviations, squared them, and now my last step is just to multiply the frequencies times these deviations squared. That is, I'm going to go back, make sure you're not using cumulative frequency, but the frequency column. I'm going to do 19 frequency times the deviation squared. 19 times 275.56 and you get 5,000 oh I made a typo here <laughs> forgot the 6 let me do that again 19 times 275.56 there we go 5,235.64 okay next one I have 23 times 43.56 which is 1001.88 next 27 61 61.5 61 uh, that makes no sense sorry 27 times 11.56 again I almost read the table wrong like, it's a big table make sure we're doing frequency times the deviation squared, that's 27 times 11.56, you get 312.12. And last but not least, there are 28 frequencies times deviation squared of 
five six and I get five thousand and twenty seven point six eight. Okay, let's sum all those up too. That is, let's take the sum of all the F midpoint minus X bar squared, so that's the frequency times the midpoint minus X bar squared, or the deviations squared times the frequency. Sum them all up. So this plus 312.12 plus 1000, oh, 1000. And 1.88 plus 5,235.64, and we get 11,577.32. Whew! Got all that summed up. Well, we're almost there. The last step is just to calculate the using a formula what the standard deviation is for this group data. That standard deviation formula, I'll give that to you on a test, it's a big formula, is the square root of the sum of, and then we're going to write the frequency times that thing we just calculated, midpoint minus, again, frequency times the deviation squared, all over the sum of the frequencies minus 1. We're doing that because we assume this is a sample. This takeaway one comes from if it's a sample, which we assume it is. So the S or the standard deviation equals the sum of the frequencies times the deviation squared, which we calculated was 11,577.32 divided by how many things there were. There were 97, but we take away one to compensate for the fact that it's a sample. And then we will calculate all that. If you want to, you can just quickly show this step is uh, obvious, but saves typing into the calculator. 97 minus 1 is obviously 96. All right, so square root, put a bracket of 11,577.32 divided by 96, close the bracket, and there, is your standard deviation approximately, let's give it two decimals, 10.98. So we've calculated the standard deviation for group data by first finding the midpoints, doing the cumulative frequency, which we didn't need so much except for its sum and to help us with the median and the mode. We calculated here F times M, that's the frequency times the midpoint. And then we did the midpoint minus the mean, those are your deviations. We squared our deviations and multiplied them by the frequency, then added them all up. And we use that for the formula. We also, on the side, we just showed the mode and the median, just so that if you need to show it, you can. And we needed to calculate the mean to get those deviations. Once we had all that, we calculated the standard deviation using the formula. And that's how you calculate standard deviation for group data.